Yo there guys, what's happening? Welcome back to another video here on uh, Nasha Vlogs. So today is a very special video. This is a video which I think I, a lot of people should be doing and I think I'd like to see a lot of people um, do this video. Um, and in this video, I'm going to be telling you what my top 10 all-time favourite Fort Park scare mazes that I've done are. So my top 10 uh, Fort Park mazes of all time. I've been going to Fright Nights now since 2017, so I've done a wide variety of mazes. Some now aren't at the park anymore, some now have just left the park, and some now are still operating to this day. So um, we're going to dive straight in. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Definitely subscribe because we are now 29 away from 400, and it would be great to hit 400 uh, by 2021, so we start next season on a high. But yeah, we're now going to go into the top 10. So at number 10 on this list is, as you can see, Containment. So Containment is Fort Park's uh, horror-themed uh, escape room. It's been at the event uh, at Fort Park since 2015. It came uh, in a year when Fort Knox got two brand new attractions. Of course, Containment being the upcharge one and the other one being the infamous Big Top. Uh, containment is technically still at the park, but it is not on the 2020 uh, Scarefest lineup due to social distancing. Uh, this I actually do question because there's other escape rooms still running uh, across the world. Uh, now, whether I think it's more of a case of actors are quite close and they wouldn't be able to socially distance, but hopefully we get Containment back next year. So as I mentioned, it is, uh, it was an upcharge attraction. It was an upcharge of £10. So it was, it's the price, it was the price that uh, the two upcharge mazes at Fright Nights this year are, which are Platform 15 and Roots of Evil. Do I think compared to those two, that, that containment was worth the money? I don't think containment was worth £10, but I definitely say it was worth maybe five or six pounds, maybe the same price as Creepy Caves. Uh, it, uh, containment is about a 20 minute experience. It doesn't feel like 20 minutes when you're in there. When you're in there, it feels like 10, 15 minutes. It does go quick after the first room. The first room goes really slow. Uh, if you do not know, you're in each room for about four minutes each room. Uh, you're in each room for about four to five minutes. Uh, when we went through in 2018, which was the only year I did it, uh, I found it quite intense at points. Uh, also, the, uh, the the puzzles were quite hard, to be honest, and uh, I'm crap at escape rooms as well. So, yeah, obviously, containment isn't at the 2020 Fright Nights Festival, uh, but I hope, fingers crossed, they'll bring it back uh, for the 20th anniversary next year. So, yeah, at number ten is um, containment. At number nine is The Walking Dead Living Nightmare. Now, The Walking Dead Living Nightmare is, in my opinion, it was, it was such a good maze when it was at the park. Uh, it came to the park in 2017 alongside The Walking Dead Sanctum. Um, it, it, it was located uh, next to Colossus uh, and it utilized from 2018 to the end of its life last year, uh, it utilised the Slammer queue line. Living Nightmare for some people was a mixed bag. Some people loved it and then it slowly decreased into not being very scary. Uh, one of the reasons why Living Nightmare sits in my heart for me is because in the summer of 2018, I managed to get over a two week period, 50 run throughs on Living Nightmare. And even after that, like, 10 to 20 runs, I was still getting really intense experiences because the actors started to recognize me. Uh, and the cast in there in the summer of 2018 were brilliant. Obviously, uh, Living Nightmare wasn't originally supposed to open in August 2018. Uh, it only opened because Saw was having some uh, technical issues. So they opened Living Nightmare up, ironically, only like a month and a half, two months after uh, Living Nightmare Extreme. Those who don't remember Living Nightmare Extreme, you, you've been living under a rock. Living Nightmare Extreme was one of the best scare experiences I'd done at the time, and it was, I think, one of the most intense. Uh, 
Now, the version of Living Nightmare, the, the reason why number nine is Living Nightmare is the 2017 version, which was its opening year version. The reason why I put the 2017 version down at the bottom of the list is because of the ending. You know, it had some tension leading up to the ending and the ending fell flat. Obviously, they did uh, make it really good for its final year. And it did, I think, leave some doors open potentially for Living Nightmare to continue. But obviously, it's uh, now or will be replaced by Black Mirror Labyrinth in 2021. Obviously, one of the criticisms loads of people give, especially me with Living Nightmare, is that black sort of tunnel down the side. Uh, we always had, I never liked queuing in there, especially in the summer. There was times where I nearly fell asleep from just being extremely hot in that tunnel. No air conditioning whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, at number nine is the 2017 version of um, Living Nightmare. At number eight on my list is a maze that was quite controversial, and some people uh, won't agree with me on this. At number eight is Vulcan Peak. So Vulcan Peak was at the park for one year only at Fright Nights 2018. It utilised what was at the time the I'm a Celebrity Maze building. Uh, there wasn't much of a turnaround between uh, the end of 2018's I'm a Celebrity season and... Um, uh, Vulcan Peak opening, it was, I do believe, about two and a half, three week turnaround. So, compared to other mazes, it was a huge. And um, we're going to start. Back in 2018, Vulcan Peak has or was and has gone down as one of the worst mazes for Park have ever created. Uh, obviously, it was a hooded maze. It started the event. Uh, it started the event being a completely hooded maze apart from the ending. And then halfway through the event, it then became a half hooded maze, half live action maze with some brilliant UV sections toward the end. Despite Vulcan Peak's flaws, I think it deserves a second chance, to be honest. Obviously, 2018's Fight Night was a quantity over quality year. Uh, and was considered one of the weakest years of the event, which some days did really, really hit or miss. Um, for me personally, I liked Vulcan Peak. I didn't like it at the start of the event, but towards the end of the event, we had some, uh, me and one of my blog stars, Life of Dills, had um, a sh some really insane run throughs. Um, and in my opinion, I think Vulcan Peak should come back for the 20th anniversary but maybe not in the jungle escape building uh, i will do a video on this about uh if vulcan people to return could it utilize a different location uh but the set in there didn't change from on the celebrity but they utilized it toward the end of the event and um yeah that's why uh vulcan peak is at number eight at number seven on the list is dead creek woods now, I'm going to say this, uh, Dead Creek Woods, in my opinion, was an underrated maze. It got criticism, which I think didn't, it didn't deserve. So, Dead Creek Woods was at the event for one year in 2018. Um, in 2018, where Dead Creek Woods was, it uh, was previously home to the Zombie Hunt attraction, which I think, once again, was underrated. And I think Zombie Hunt should come back. Uh, and the sneaky fact about uh, Fright Nights 2020 is the guns that they use in Swarm Invasion are actually the old Zombie Hunt guns. So Zombie Hunt, uh, Zombie Hunt and Dead Creek Woods have sort of made its way into the event this year. Um, so Dead Creek Woods, you would enter through uh, a hole in the fence in Timber Tug Boat's queue and you would then go down and you would follow the zombie hunt route all the way up and you'd exit in the compound uh, next to the uh, I'm a Celebrity building. Now, recently in these uh, current situations, people are still saying that Dead Creek Woods uh, predicted COVID because it has that uh, town under quarantine theme. I have to laugh and I think, uh, I, I find that quite funny that um, that particular theme, we are now living that theme. Apart from we don't have um, doctors running around with chainsaws. 
um, in the woods. So I don't know where. But as I say, Dead Creek Woods was such an underrated maze. The first ever run through I got on it back in Fight Nights 2018 was uh, during the annual part, I do believe during the annual pass preview, which was, I think, when it was at its best, uh, I do believe towards the end of the event, it did start getting weaker because um, those who didn't do Dead Creek Woods, there was actually a chainsaw bit in the middle. Uh, normally, chainsaws are towards the end of the maze or end, end of mazes, but uh, this one had a chainsaw in the middle, which um, did cause a little bit of issues throughout the event with people running and causing people to be pushed out of the way. Uh, I accidentally ran into one of the fences, tripped and knocked about two people over uh, because of the chainsaw, which, um, <laughs> but this run through I had, a uh, big shout out to Michael who was on chainsaw. Um, Michael uh, really got me good with the chainsaw, had me caught right up. Uh, cornered I, and I was with that chainsaw about for about 45 seconds and I did not move and then I got chased halfway down the path it was insane um, and I would love to see Dead Creek Woods come back eventually I'm surprised they didn't expand it uh, however the area where it is is now looking really really bad uh, overgrown really bad it's starting to look slightly worse than Saw Alive at this point but um, yeah so Dead Creek Woods is at uh, number seven at number six is The Walking Dead Do or Die. I'm going to say this now. I think The Walking Dead Do or Die was um, an overrated maze at the best of times. I think it was, at times it was really hyped up and I ended up having some bad run throughs. Uh, but the particular version that I'm going to be talking about was the 2019 version. So Walking Dead Do or Die was located uh, near uh, Vortex. Uh, currently where uh, the Howling of Lycanthorpe High is this year. Um, Do or Die came in in 2018 and left the park at the end of last year. And it was a mix of, an, it was an outdoor maze with inside scenes taking place in shipping containers and school buses. 2018's version was really good. It had a chainsaw section towards the middle, which I saw sort of notice only really happened during the nighttime runs, then became less regular uh, towards the end of the event. Uh, but 2019's version had some really good scares. Uh, shout out to Molly, Preston, Sam, and everyone in that cast that year in 2019 uh, in Walking Dead Do or Die's final year. I feel like you really did that maze justice. Um, to be honest, I wouldn't like Walking Dead Do or Die to come back because I, I, I'm not a huge fan. I do prefer Living Nightmare over this one. But um, yeah, that's The Walking Dead Do or Die. At number five is the 2018 edition of Blair Witch. Now, when they announced Blair Witch was coming back in 2018, I'll be honest, it was my least anticipated maze because of its past. I really wasn't looking forward to it, but it surprised me. Uh, Blair Witch uh, has been, was at the park for many years. Uh, it first came in in 2013 and ran until the end of 2016. Uh, fun fact, it was actually due to return in 2017, uh, but it was uh, pulled out last minute. So potentially you would have had Blair Witch in The Walking Dead sort of year. And then it came back in 2018 until the end of 2019. 2018, I think, was one of its best years. I always said this, the best scene in Blair Witch was the shed at the end. It always had jump scares. It, it mixed smoke, audio, flashing lights. It was just insane. And I had some really intense up close and personal run throughs in that. Uh, at one point I got dragged through the shed, all the way out the shed, and then got dragged back through the shed. Uh, I got pinned up against the wall, like physically picked up and pinned against the wall. Uh, all while other guests are walking past, so they find that quite funny. Um, one of my favourite run-throughs I had was, if you didn't know, just before the hut, there was like a little crawl section. Um, an actor I knew was behind me uh, as I was going through the crawl section, grabbed me and dragged me all the way through the crawl section, um, if, which meant I had to go back in it again, which was really insane. Like Blair Witch was just, I think, really good. At times, 
2019, I think it was an overrated maze. I wasn't a fan of it last year, uh, but it still has some intense run throughs. So um, I would like to see Blair Witch return. Obviously, Blair Witch this year has been replaced by Roots of Evil, which I'm going to say this now. It's a creepy caves on Earth, the copycat or clone. Uh, I am, at the time of filming, I will be doing uh, Roots of Evil this weekend on the final day of Fright Night. So uh, stay tuned for a review of Platform 15 and Roots of Evil coming uh, next week. So yeah, at number five was Blair Witch. At number four is the 2017 edition of Platform 15. So if you do not know, uh, at the time, Platform 15 ran, um, you'd enter in Old Town uh, on the Canada, Old Canada Creek Railway uh, station platform, and you would follow it all the way down, and you'd exit through the Pitch Black Tunnel, or Bin Bag Tunnel, down at um, next to Samurai. The reason why the 2017 version um, in 2017, when I first did Fright Night, I had never done a horror maze before. And the reason why uh, Platform is so special to me, even now, is because Platform 15 was the first ever horror maze I did. But sadly, it was a daytime run through due to time constraints. But Platform 15 was intense, and it has been intense for the last couple of years. Hence why every Fright Night it's there, I always go back to it and it's one of my priorities to do. Whether people say it's bad or good, um, obviously, uh, just like we, when I mentioned about Blair Witch and Roots of Evil, uh, this weekend I will be trying out this year's version of Platform 15, which is the reversed. Obviously, in this picture, you can see the train is stood upright. Those who know who's done Platform 15 this year, you'll know the train is actually on its side this year. Um, but I just love Platform 15. I think the whole story, I love the pyrotechnics and the lighting and just the atmosphere it has of walking through the woods. Yeah, it's just insane. And obviously, 2017, um, I got split up in the village and ended up having to do the tunnel finale all by my own. Uh, and that smoke finale was just insane. I think I was actually stuck in there for about a minute or two minutes because I couldn't realise uh, where the exit was. And also... If you ever get split up and you ended up doing that tunnel alone, doing it alone is extremely terrifying and you don't realise how terrifying it is. Um, but ever since then, uh, now if, like, say, uh, it's just you and a group's just gone in, you'll end up waiting for another group for some reason. I don't know why, but, but yeah, that's Platform 15 in 2017 at number four. At number three is The Walking Dead Living Nightmare Extreme. Uh, Living Nightmare Extreme ran for one week in the May half term of 2018, and it is it was one of the most insane scare mazes I'd ever done. Uh, it had, I think, on the two run throughs I had, we had the first run through we had about 30 actors, the second one we had about 20. This is the version of Living Nightmare that really reminisces with me now, and is one of the reasons why I enjoy extreme horror mazes now. Um, there's not much I can say about Living Nightmare Extreme really. Um, I think some people say it was uh, over well, like overhyped. I don't think so. I think it was underhyped and underrated. But yeah, number three, Living Nightmare Extreme. At number two was The Big Top. Now, sadly, I only did Big Top in its final year. And then after that, we did get the, um, what I think was a really underrated Big Top Showtime, um, which had a brilliant cast uh, Alex, uh, Sam. Uh, absolutely brilliant. But the Big Top Maze itself in 2017 was located uh, where Do or Die and Howling and Like and Pop High then took over. What can I not say about the Big Top? Uh, the Big Top Strobe Maze was the most insane strobe maze. Uh, I ended up doing half of uh, the Big Top Maze alone. Even after an e-stop, I ended up getting split up again in the strobe maze and doing it on my own. And the chainsaw finale was just insane. I think I got chased past the exit and just sort of around the corner. So I got an even insane run through. Um, also big shout out to Brandon who was in there in 2017 as well. But yeah, if I were to choose Big Top Showtime or the Big Top as my favorite, they're both just as good. Um, and I do sort of get Big Top vibes from this year's uh, Fierce to Ball Arena. So at number two was the Big Top. And at number one, my favourite four-park scare maze of all time 
is of course Creek Creek Massacre. This is, last year, this was my uh, in my top ten mazes that I did last year. This was number two, just being beaten by Creepy Caves After Dark. What can I say about Creek Creek? The theming in there was insane. The chainsaws. Um, I had a really extreme run through. I think on the day we went, we had five run throughs. At one point, it was advertised at sixty minutes. They actually ended up being like fifteen. Um, so the queue times were very well underestimated. The cast that was in there that year, Tiger, um, Alice, I'm trying to think who else, uh, Jack, um, Renee, all absolutely brilliant. Luke, it was just absolutely insane. Um, I, I, just, I just cannot get over that maze. Creek Creek Massacre, obviously this year hasn't come back due to COVID-19, but we did get its sort of sequel, uh, Creek Freaks Unchained, uh, which is just as brilliant. Shout out to James, uh, Brandon, uh, Jason, Sam as well. You may have seen uh, the name Sam come up quite a few times. He's been in some of the most iconic mazes that I've done. But yeah, Creep Freak Massacre is currently my favourite all-time scare maze, and I really hope it comes back for the 20th anniversary, hopefully post-COVID. But guys, uh, thank you very much for watching this video. If you did um, enjoy it, then um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I've been Nasha. This has been another video on Nasha Vlogs. Let me know what your top 10 all-time favourite scare maze of the four part, and how many years have you been doing Fright Nights? I'd like to know. Anyway, like, comment, and subscribe. Like I said, I'll be doing reviews of Roots of Evil and Platform 15 early next week. So, guys, until then, I will see you in the next one. Stay safe, wear your masks, and peace 